Today we're talking about the fedora, a classic menswear style of hat popular for the last 150 years. Here you can see it in an ad from the 1950s, showing its traditional dimple top and pinch front crown with a curved brim that can be worn up or down. The fedora is most frequently made of felt or straw. You'll recognize the fedora from classic Hollywood movies like these from the 1930s, showing felt fedoras won by dapper stars like Cary Grant and Katharine Hepburn. During this time, the fedora was worn with slick style equally by both men and women. Also during the early part of the 20th century, the fedora was adopted and worn by tough guys of all kinds, including pachucos or zoot suitors, gangsters like Al Capone and musicians, in addition to gentlemen of all types when they just wanted to look good. The fedora came to be associated with machismo and power. The fedora continued well into the 1960s as a symbol of cool, as demonstrated here by the Rat Pack. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. and friends, who comprised the ultimate boys club, as they portrayed charming gangsters, gamblers, and players in movies and nightclub acts for decades. Eventually, over the 20th century, the fedora expanded its meaning to include a dashing attitude and an adventuresome spirit. This was the hat you wore if you were traveling through jungles, taking or giving a beating, or dishing out sass. This hat doesn't care what you think. This is the mic drop of hats. So considering its later macho associations, it may be surprising to know that the hat was first introduced on stage in a play called Fedora, with Sarah Bernhardt in the title role in Paris in 1882. Fedora was a Russian princess and she wore a soft felt hat with a pinch front, dimple top, and tilted brim. The fedora, as first adopted by women, was a symbol of liberation and bravery. Sarah Bernhardt was an unconventional woman for her time. Extremely independent, traveling alone, overtly sexual and non-monogamous, she was proudly scandalous. She was also one of the first international superstars, an actress famous for playing both male and female roles. Soon the fedora was also being worn by men of taste and style, like queer esthete, renowned speaker, dramatist, and writer Oscar Wilde, and Bertie, or Albert, the Prince of Wales, the stylish and extremely badly behaved son of Queen Victoria, also known as the future King of England, Edward VII. Originally, as menswear, the fedora represented sophistication. So it is maybe not surprising, based on its original associations with power, sophistication, independence, and a counterculture sensibility, that in the 20th century the fedora also came to be worn by women who were pushing at the edges of traditional gender roles. The fedora was worn with tailored women's wear and denoted independence and toughness. And although it was certainly popular in mainstream culture, it was also worn less visibly in the underground queer culture of the very early 20th century. Long before there was anything called or recognized as trans identity, there were women and men who dressed or lived on the edge of the gender binary, and menswear in general, and the fedora in particular, were a part of a style and identity choice. Over the course of the last century and a half, fedora style, in all its many variations, has permeated every element of pop culture and continues to denote power, independence, iconoclasm, and cool. What has always been true of the fedora is its enduring association with style, with a proud and elegant self-presentation, what the Italians like to call la bella figura, or cutting a fine figure and making an impression. As such, the fedora is uniquely positioned in popular and fashion culture. It denotes classic style but allows for infinite variety. It can be traditional or radical, big or small, classic or colorful, dramatic or understated, simple or elaborate. It can be worn in as many ways as there are wearers. The fedora's long associations and complicated backstory are available to be used by anyone to say something about themselves, assuming it is said with flair and style. The fedora will forever tell a story of strength, individuality, independence, and power. What will your fedora say? Fashion design is the telling of a story. You start with a body and a relatively limited toolbox of garments and the basic elements of design. But with these tools, you can tell any story you like. How will you use the classic shape of the fedora and color, texture, and scale to design your own story?
Here are a few ideas to inspire you. A suede fedora with a curved brim of traditional Mexican embroidery. A traditional black fedora with graphic text evoking its place in the fashion pantheon. A broad brim Western style fedora with a rainbow of paint and a collage of symbolic elements. A classic menswear fedora softened with a streaming ribbon of vintage textile with beads and embroidery. A boho forest fantasia of dried flowers and botanicals evoking nature and softness. A classic gambler style trimmed with a hand embroidered band and distressed with fire. A vivid fuchsia fedora with a drooping brim and a graffiti inspired paint job. A traditional olive Tyrolean style with grosgrain ribbon and Swiss braid and a collection of game bird feathers or a romantic feather and rose extravaganza with a heart-shaped dimple singed into the tip. How will you wear your fedora? What will you say with yours? Today I'm going to show you how to drape a hat band out of fabric. This is one millinery trimming skill that can create many looks. First of all, some terms. Millinery is another word for hat making. A milliner is a hat maker. A hat maker who makes only menswear styles like the fedora, bowler, boater, pork pie, or top hat is also called a hatter. A milliner makes any kind of hat, including more feminine styles like fascinators, cloches, toques, turbans, draped fabric or straw hats, and derby hats. Anything you can think of. The variety in the history of women's headwear is vast. Now I'll show you around our featured hat. This is a classic style fedora. It's made of woven straw and it has a lining of a stiffer net inside to keep it crisp and fresh. When we talk about hats, there are terms to describe the different parts. The crown is the top of the hat, or the part that sits on your head. It's composed of the side band, or the vertical sides of the crown, and the tip or the flat part on the very top. The crown of a fedora generally has a dimple in the tip and a pinch front in the side band. The side band is traditionally about four inches tall, but can be as high or as low as you want it to be. If it's tilted to the back, that turns a fedora into its close cousin, the trilby. The brim is the part that sticks out. It can be narrow, like this one. This is a skimpy brim or stingy brim fedora, which means the brim is under two inches, or your brim can be as broad as you like. A fedora brim can be curled or flat, worn up, down, or some of each. This one is both, curled in back and flat in front. A hat can have a huge variety of trims and decorations, but the most traditional hat trimmings include a hat band, which is the decorative band that goes around the base of the crown. This can be a ribbon, a piece of rope, trim, or leather, a textile, beads, there are lots of options. The brim can also have a binding, which is a ribbon or strip of fabric or leather that goes around the edge of the brim. The brim may or may not have a wire which can be hidden under the binding to keep it stiff and make it bendable. Either way, the binding protects the edge of the hat from wear and tear and is replaceable if it gets torn or dirty. Finally is the decoration, which traditionally on a fedora is composed of a small spray of feathers and or a button, but can actually be anything. A flower, big feathers, a jeweled pin or brooch, or anything you can think of. I'm going to show you how to make a draped hat band. A draped hat band means a hat band made of fabric, which can be a scarf, a bandana, or any piece of textile or fabric. The first thing you need to know about using fabric to trim a hat is that you always need to use the bias. The bias means the diagonal of any woven piece of fabric. When fabric is woven, it has a warp or a cross grain and a weft or the lengthwise grain based on the way it was made on the loom. The bias is the diagonal line between these two. Draping on the bias allows for a flexibility and stretch that you won't get from either straight grain, as well as a gracefulness to the folds in the hat band. The side band of most hats is not a cylinder shape. It's more like a truncated cone, in that the top of the crown is narrower than the bottom. If you try to put a straight ribbon or piece of fabric on the cone-shaped crown, you will find that it will not lie flat against the side of the hat, but will create a gap at the top of the ribbon. To make a hat band that really lies nicely on the crown, you can use the bias of a scarf or textile and drape it. 
So we can start by removing the original hat band, which on this $15 hat from Amazon is only glued on. The original hat band on this hat is a pleated piece of fabric on the bias, which is a traditional band for this type of fedora. To replicate the original hat band, I cut a six inch wide piece of fabric on the bias, which I marked by laying my ruler at a 45 degree angle to the edge of the fabric. I laid the bias piece flat on my ironing board, pressed a fold into one edge with my steam iron, and then started pleating. I continued to add pleats of about 3 eighths of an inch each until I had four, and then pressed under the extra fabric for a clean edge. You can see how it starts out as a straight pleated band, but I can use my iron to introduce a curve so the band will lie nicely against the side of the crown. Lie your hat band against the crown of your fedora and adjust it until it lays smooth and clean. You can use a bandana or handkerchief to create a fabric hat band with a more casual sensibility. I'm using a vintage handkerchief in China silk with a graphic print. Iron your handkerchief and then fold it into a triangle. Add additional folds or pleats to get the look you want. You can make a narrow or broad hat band this way, and you can make it soft or crisp, depending on how you fold the scarf and whether or not you choose to press in the folds. My handkerchief is just long enough to go around my hat and tie in a cute knot at the side. Drape it and tie it on, and then adjust where it sits on the hat. Manipulate the folds until it looks right. When you have it where you want it, sneak in a little glue or double stick tape underneath the band or ideally some invisible hand stitching to hold it in place. If you prefer, you could use a much larger square scarf for a more dramatic look. I recommend checking thrift and vintage stores for a scarf in a lightweight silk as it drapes the prettiest and is light enough to not weigh down your hat. Repurposed pieces of sari silk or dupatas would be great for this. Fold your scarf into a triangle and then add more folds until it fits on your hat the way you want. Lift your folded scarf carefully and drape it onto your hat. You can tie it behind for tails that stream down your back or at the side for a bohemian look. Adjust the position and the folds and then glue, tape, or stitch it in place. Every hat band deserves a feather. As you choose your feather decoration, keep in mind the style of your hat and make sure the elements are compatible. Each combination tells a different story. So here you can see three variations of draped hat bands on one hat. The first is the classic menswear pleated bias fabric hat band like the one original to this hat, made of iridescent peacock blue silk with a combination of natural pheasant and guinea fowl feathers. The second is the small silk scarf folded on the bias with jazzy dyed and point cut goose feather decoration. The third is a large silk scarf with a flowing tail 
and curled golden ostrich feathers topped with a giant silk poppy. I hope you enjoy trimming your own fedora. <laughs>